Yeah. Back doing the living room thing again. Uh, let's see, it's been a little over a week since the last time I was up here, so I'm overdue. Not really much to talk about, but uh, I figure if I go too long without saying anything, you might think I died or something. <laughs> anyway, kind of wanted to do something yesterday, but luck what happened, I wound up sick. Uh, go figure, right? <laughs> Shit. Uh, yeah, so... Wednesday, you know, I did my thing with uh, electrolysis for our visit mom. Yeah, and I knock on the door and you know, walk in there and she tells me, Oh, you didn't get my message? I tried to tell you not, not to come over because I'm sick. Well, yeah, she she placed a phone call at 5 o'clock in the morning to try to uh, you know, talk to me, but... Uh, yeah, the voicemail that she got belonged to someone else. See, there's a an 8 in my phone number, and she dialed a 5. So, she left a voicemail for some stranger. <laughs> I never got it. Anyway, it appears that I wound up ca uh, catching whatever she had. Not as severely, but I was basically unable to talk all day yesterday. Anytime I had to try to say anything, it was... Really? What the hell do you want? Now I got the cat trying to, sh to shred my chair. Beautiful. All the she gets, the more destructive she gets. It's beautiful. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to need this right now because, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, I was. I was down for the count yesterday. And as it turned out, part of, part of today as well. Um, yeah, so last night, you know, being sick and all, I decided to just go upstairs. Try to work my way through a book because, you know, <laughs> my, my fucking manga collection just keeps expanding more and more by the day. And the one that I decided to pick up um, to read the other day, or earlier this week, got through the first couple chapters the other, the other night and put it down. Um, it actually turned out to be, uh, to be this gem. <laughs> I want to eat your pancreas. And yeah, this is you know, the, the entire collection in, in one. I'm Assuming that there is a uh, like a, a multi-volume pack at some point that, that predated that. But, uh, reading up on it a little bit, I found out that it was actually a, a web a uh, a web series before it became a, a printed book. A couple of movie adaptations too. But anyway, I wound up reading that uh, to completion last night. And, yeah, it was definitely a trip. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and spoil, you know, spoil some of the, the key points of the book. But, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the whole premise of the book, you know, was you got this, uh, this high schooler, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's nameless throughout most of it. Um, actually, there was a point near the end. Um, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Shit. Sorry, I should have brought this up earlier. Sorry, I really should have thought of this earlier, but 
you know, the, the guy's nameless throughout most of it. They, they refer to him by, uh, by various titles throughout. But he actually does share his name near the end. And I think it'd be easier for me to just get that name. Ah, she got Haruki. So, Haruki. Sorry about that. It was going to bug me if I didn't get to look it up. Um, yeah, so, you know, sorry, you know, it's Haruki, and, uh, you know, he's, he's, narr he's narrating it throughout. Um, I mean, this, the, the story opens up, you know, where the other primary character, you know, who, you know, who really is the focus of everything, um, Sakura, you know, it opens up on, on the day of her funeral. And, you know, he fills in the backstory about, about how they met, how he, uh, you know, discovered her secret as she was dying of a pancreatic illness. Which I don't believe was ever fully I, I, um, stated what the illness was. Um, but yeah, she, uh, you know, she is, you know, she tells the, uh, she tells Akura at the beginning of the story that you know, she's got about, about a year left to live, according to the doctors, and you know, she just wants to live life to the fullest. And, you know, it's, you know, it, it covers those first few months after they, after they start to get familiar with each other, and, you know, some of their antics, some of their trips that they take, and uh, you know, the exploits of uh, <laughs> of a, uh, a a couple, non-couple, um, if that makes any sense. It's like she's very clearly trying to uh, to you know, to get out of the shell, and you know, some of it is is quite flirty. And you know, at, at the end, it's uh, you know, it's it they never actually get together. I mean, it's pretty much <laughs> it's like in, in, any norm in the normal people would have been together by that point, but you know, uh, but, you know he uh, you know he he's pretty much still in his shell throughout most of it and just can't see ever looking at her that way, so. And everything, you know, it, it progresses, and you know, she winds up, and uh, by the eighth chapter, she's in the hospital again. As a precaution, they said, and, and uh, you know, she still seems to be all, all bright and cheery. Gets discharged to go home. They they make plans to you know to meet up the next day. That fucking eighth chapter though. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm all for for a, for a good subversion of expectations, but this one just God it, it pissed me off and it, it infuriated me. But, so, Sakura never makes the rendezvous at the end of chapter 8. And, you know, he, you know, Raider's left just wondering, okay, what, uh, you know, what happened? And he waits there all afternoon for her, all evening. Never shows up, never shows up, never shows up. He goes home when, uh, at closing time at, at the cafe they're going to be at. And... I just want to find out that uh, that the serial killer mentioned in uh, one of the early chapters, you know, just briefly in passing, uh, turned, well, the twist was that uh, Sakura became his last victim. So you know, you, you go through this uh, this this eighth chapter. You know, it's it's a ten, it's a, it's a ten chapter book, right? So you're, you know, you're probably thinking, okay, chapters nine and ten are going to be where, you know, she goes into decline and got to deal with saying goodbye. 
No. No. Chapter 8, they're just like, okay, she's dead. She goes, stabbed through the heart. That was it. Shit really pissed me off though. Yeah. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even be talking about it right now because I'm <laughs> still not in a good headspace for it. And that's the funny, you know, that's the funny part of it. It's this, you know, it's a fictional work, so why am I so, you know, so, so invested in all this? I, it shouldn't face me at all, you know? I'm just, uh, but I guess that's one of the uh, side effects of HRT, is that you, know, you get a lot, a lot more, a lot more emotional, and, uh, I mean, I, I was never, you know, like the, a uh, a bastion of, uh, <laughs> of uh, mm, you know, I can't think of the right word for it. But, you know, we just don't, don't, don't express any, any emotions at all. You know, I've, I've never been that kind of a person, you know. Uh, stoicism, I guess, would be the word. I've, I've never been that kind of person, you know. <laughs> the cat is investigating the bank I brought home this morning. That's great. Um, but yeah, you know the. But for me, it it upset me so much that <laughs> at the end of the eighth chapter, I was just I was so pissed off. I actually threw the book down. I mean, physically threw it down. In disgust because it pissed me off so much and I, I just started bawling you know so much so that I still have a headache from it and I guess that's where I was trying to go with it is that you know this this book this story you know I knew it was, I knew it was gonna be a tearjerker but to bring me to that point where I was actually just fucking bawling <laughs> you know hard enough for that you know, I, I wind up with this splitting headache, you know, just absolutely merciless headache that persisted all throughout the night into this morning and even into that this afternoon. And I still have it, you know, a little bit. And that, uh, that's the sad part. <laughs> Sorry, I got to check something. I didn't get 13 minutes in. God damn, I've been talking about this for 13 minutes and really said anything sorry um but yeah I suppose it pisses me off more so you know this uh, not really pissed me off but it has a deeper impact with me um because you know pancreatic cancer was what killed my father you know from diagnosis to death was um let's see diagnosis was made march 9th and he died may 16th so that was what nine weeks so it was nine and a half weeks later but you know and i i know, I know it wasn't the same cause of death but But I went into this thing knowing that it was going to be a, a challenging read for me, emotionally. And, yeah, it, uh, it took a toll. So. And even now, here I am, you know, it's a, you know, a better part of a day later, and I, <laughs> I am still a mess.
So I, uh, I had to be realistic. You know, I, I had to you know, be honest with myself about something that I, you know, I really never, never really talked about before. And I was blogging last night and you know, brought this whole thing up. I made a, a fairly ranty blog post about it. Sorry. And, you know, I, I concluded by, you know, I kind of deviated from talking about the book, you know, to this whole point of, of mortality. And, you know, ever, ever since I was old enough to dictate the people, the family members, the acquaintances, whoever that I associate with, you know, I have actually made a point out of not um not really wanting to stay close with the older generation of my family um largely because you know as you reach, reach a certain age it's just going to be a, a parade of death you know one after another after another after another and for my part i i have an extremely thin skin about death, you know. I, you know, I, I lost, I lose my father, you know, I lose my, my dad five and a half years ago, and I still have trouble dealing with it even now. I, you know, I, I'm fine most days, but I still have these days where I still break down, you know. Then I try to multiply that over the course of, you know, I've got, God, I don't even know how many aunts and uncles I've got now, and then you got the extended family beyond that, and, and you know, there are, <laughs> my dad was the first one to go, you know, and the rest of them, they are all now older than he was when he died. And they're all getting older. And I've got, got one aunt who is barely hanging on. She's she's in hospice. Ah, uh, you know, she's she's held on for so many years. And I actually saw her um, through the web through the uh, the live stream of my uncle's funeral uh, this winter. And even then, she looked like you know, she was she was nothing but skin and bones back then, and could barely walk. And she's been hanging on all this time, getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And you know, I I don't know how much time she has left. He was saying that for you know for a hell of a long time though. So, but yeah, I mean, even my sister said that that she visited for the last time just to say goodbye. But, um, yeah, so she'll probably be the next one. Okay, so you know my, my uncle Frank, he did die well, you know, back in uh, back in January. And I knew I, I couldn't make the funeral or or, or the uh, the burial either because uh, for one, they're they're pretty hostile states to go to, you know. but for two, I just I cannot handle death, and I knew this. You know, when when, uh, when they started talking about about you know his final plans and everything, but there's still you know, there's there's Marlis, there's Edie. There's Dave, you know, my mom's side, there's Keith, there's Carol, there's another Dave, and of course there's mom too. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's what, seven more? Seven more funerals I gotta consider within most likely the next, you know, the next couple of years. You know, so I, you know, I've, I've kept distance from from all from, you know, most of them anyway. Can't really keep distance from mom because, well, 
she's right here in town, so. But, yeah, for, uh, yeah, for the sake of, huh, am I being able to hold it together? I kept them all at a distance because I've known that one day when they're, they're going to die, I'm going to have to try to fumble my way through, you know, funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral. And I don't heal quickly from <laughs> from emotional damage, so you know, that's kind of a self-preservation thing. Shitty excuse, I know. Probably makes me a horrible person to say it that way. But it's true. And I really can't handle the death and the mourning process. And on top of that, um, you know, we'll basically, <laughs> you know, have a, a slight reprieve in the, in the years to come, you know, with the generational gap. But again, I am so much younger than most of the rest of my generation in the family. I mean, I've got cousins who are already in, in their 60s. I mean, I'm, you know, I'll be 43 in a couple of months. But you know, they're, uh, I, you know, I got cousins that are, re are reaching retirement age already. So you know, they're, they're, their passings won't be all that far off either. Now, uh, fortunately or maybe unfortunately, I don't know. Um, you know, a lot of them have done the, the legwork for me and distanced themselves thanks to my being trans. But still, there's going to be others that I'm going to have to deal with that, too. So, you know, it's, you know, I was just talking about you know, in my blog, you know, blog last night that, you know, I do often lament the fact that I don't have a lot of people that I'm close to. But at the same time, it's for the best, at least on my end, because... You know, we get older, we die, and how am I going to deal you know, if, if a single death is still fucking with me so badly after five years, five and a half years? You know, what is a constant parade of death and mourning and picking up the pieces you know, after losing all these people that, that you care so much about? You know, who go on at you or pass on before you <coughs> you know what what's that gonna do you know so I just kind of made it the conscious decision when I was you know, when I was old enough to start making making that decision for myself that yeah when uh, when it comes to keeping people close or, or or not I choose not you know with very few exceptions because inevitably you know either they're going to be ripped from you or you're going to be torn from them and you know it's going to be devastating you know it's going to leave this giant void in your soul you know that, that can't be filled because you know they, they meant so fucking much to you So, so, I was reflecting on that last night and this morning, and as it, as it, uh, as it happens quite often, you know, I start thinking about my own, you know, my, my own mortality, and the fact that, you know, chance, you know chances are really good that I'm not going to live to see 80. I mean, between my genetics and my lifestyle and, you know, just the, the way I don't take care of myself at all, you know, I, I don't anticipate making it to 80. So, my life is, is more than half over already, and I know that much. And there are a lot of days where, you know, I am totally fine with that, I just 
want to hurry up and get it over with because I hate this life anyway. And I want off this rock. But what I don't look forward to is the journey to the end. You know, where, where you're fighting this losing battle with your own body. Where, you know, where, you know your mobility decreases, diminishes day by day by day. And you know, before you know it, you know, you're, you know, you need assistance to walk, or if you can even walk at all. Or how about, you know, moving, uh, you know, you know or getting moved to a wheelchair or you know, some shit like that. Or even being able to, you know, climb stairs or, you know, have, have any control of your extremities. Or say, you know, just some basic like taking a shit or whatever with that without assistance. You know, you got all that shit to look forward to, uh, to, to losing your your capacity for in, in the years to come. And you know, I I get these days where I, you know I think about the end, you know the. Uh, the, the final stretch before you do go and it's like that uh, that thinking you know that you get this feeling that it's just it's all bearing down on you like just this suffocating wave of darkness that just crushes you you know to the soul and it, it, it makes me freak out. I'm, I freak out. I get, you know, I, I've, I've had anxiety attacks over it. I, I've just, you know, I've lost a lot of sleep over these, uh, these thoughts because inevitably you gotta go through it, you know, unless you're one of those lucky ones that just gets killed instantly when, uh, you know, <laughs> by some dumbass driving the wrong way on the road. On the highway, or you know, st you can't just straight bullet to the brain. You know, but for the rest of us that aren't so lucky, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta look forward to that, uh, you know, that process of the body shutting down and betraying you and leaving you as you know, basically as this immobile pilot inside your own brain, watching. You know this this machine that we call the body, you know, shut down bit by bit, piece by piece. You know, while while you're stuck inside, just awaiting the inevitable. Because no matter how good of a, of a machine the human body is, no matter how good, you know, the uh, mechanics, if you want to call it that, that doctors are, you know, eventually it cannot be fixed. And, and and with our current level of technology, there's no way to transfer, a, you know, a human consciousness from one vessel to another. So, you know, so you just got that to look forward to. Uh, you know, one day your body's just gonna say, "Fuck you, I'm not moving anymore," and you either gotta just sit or lay there and you know, deal with it. Or maybe you become a lucky one that, that experiences that, that end in their sleep. I have the, you know, the sinking feeling that I'm going to be one of the, the unlucky ones that has to stay awake throughout the, the entire process and, and watch it all unfold. Part of why I just want to punch my own ticket and just be done with it so I don't have to deal with that. It's terrible, I know. But for me, for me, I just don't have the strength. I don't. I don't have the uh, the, the, the fortitude to uh, to handle you know the 
the inevitability of death. Because I don't know. I just I never could. So <laughs> like a fucking coward I try to run from it. Knowing that it's not gonna do me any good in the end because <laughs> death comes death comes for us all. And it likes to toy with its prey before it takes us. It sucks, you know? <sighs> but, yeah. <laughs> so that's what was on, been on my mind for the last 24 hours. I actually kind of want to talk about other stuff before, I, before that, but uh, this is... This has just completely dominated my, my thinking since I, I read the book last night. I mean, it's, it's a, it was a great story, aside from that twist in Chapter 8, but I will likely never read it again because it just it was too much. Just too much for me to handle. So, I think I'm just gonna stop this here because I wanna, I wanna get up and get something to eat because, yeah, I haven't eaten since, what was it, about five o'clock this morning and we're coming up on like 4.30 in the afternoon now, so I should probably get some, some sustenance in me. Plus, uh, it looks like Trisha's a little pissed off at me for not feeding her and giving her attention to. Anyway, um, yeah. I go back to work tomorrow, so we'll see what happens. Oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'll share it next time. I got something in the mail yesterday that uh, I really do want to share, but uh, I'd have to get up and go find, go, go grab and come back. That would take, that'd take too much time. And I've already prattled on long enough, so. Uh, you all have a great weekend, and I will talk to you next time. Hey, by the way, next time is uh, officially update 100. Um... I know the playlist is only going to say 98, but uh, I got a couple in there that I uploaded and decided that I didn't want to keep, keep public anymore, so I privatized them. But anyway, that was just a little FYI. I'll talk to you later.